Hi guys, uh, welcome back. This week I'm going to continue a conversation that I was having with somebody, Deb the RN, um, in a hangout chat about art. And she brought up um, a comment or an idea that um, people who have an artistic brain, um, it's a gift and we can just see. Um, I agreed with her that a lot of what I do does come as a natural instinct, but in thinking about it after we had gotten off the chat and I was thinking about it for a good long while, um, how do I convey what I do into a tutorial if what I do is just natural? And it came up with some ideas about how my artistic process evolved and how I am now able to just see color and color blending. And I started changing my mind about it being as natural or is it a learned process? Because why do people evolve in art? Either you're good or you're not. And I don't believe that, no, that people who um, are not naturally attracted to art can't be good artists. It can be learned. Then another one of my subscribers brought up um, a question that they had um, adult attention deficit disorder. And I was thinking to myself, wow, you know, I, I don't know, I'm not diagnosed with something like that, but I definitely fall into the more scattered brained people. I'm definitely not somebody who does one task all the way through and uh, without completely looking at another task or starting 10 tasks at once. I'm really good at multitasking. That's kind of our excuse. We multitask. And then I started looking at some people's coloring techniques and it kind of came down to two. One is where people sweep their color across the page. They do one area, say the lower right area, and they finish it and they move on to the next area. And this would be like if I started a flower and I um, finished that flower, all the layers, and then I worked on the next flower. I don't do that. I work from the bottom up. I definitely think that it's a learning process and if it's something that can be learned anybody can learn it now you could see by the picture that I'm doing this week uh, that I am doing my bottom layers first then I not necessarily in that order in every area but basically I did my bottom finished up in my bottom layers moved on to the next um, you could see I didn't hold fast to that rule. I did do other layers on top of it, but the picture didn't really start to evolve until I got to my upper layers. And that's way different than at the beginning of this uh, video, I showed a picture of a face. And in thinking of it, um, I do my faces piece by piece. Um, I usually will finish a face completely develop it to its fullest before moving on to something else and I think that that for me is the most comfortable way of doing it and mostly for the face it's because I want to get a really smooth skin tone so I finish it because you never know when you put away a pencil if you forget a layer or forget something with your pencil I'll go through my process of how I do my faces in another video but as you could see in this method, I'm developing the colors. When I first see a picture and it's blank, immediately I can see that picture being finished. And where you train your brain is to be able to see that finished product and then create it from your mind. 
And I think that this way of doing it, where you're able to lay your colors down on the paper and then bring your picture to life is a much easier way. So this method in itself is much better for people who do have adult attention deficit and for people who just are more comfortable with doing the whole page and bringing it to life instead of sweeping, bringing it to life and sweeping across the page. Another thing that I wanted to bring out in this picture, um, I had seen her, you know, the empty page, and I immediately saw in my mind's eye that this fairy was making this field glow. And that's definitely a technique. It's something you have to learn how to do. And you could see me holding that pencil there. Started with my Prismacolors and then when I wanted to get to the yellow and make the field glow and make her glow, I switched over to oil. And that's cadmium, dark cadmium yellow from uh, my polychromos. Here's my babies, they're growing. I think I ended up with 12 altogether. So the reason why this picture works, uh, the glow, te you know, the glowing trick, is because the polychromos do not blend really well with the um, with the wax, oil and wax. Then you're not going to get that same creamy look what you get to get is you can imagine cellophane going on top creating other colors so you could get that translucent yellow glow over the blue instead of turning the entire thing green I made a lot of mistakes trying to do this and because nobody told me to switch over to an oil Here we are starting on the wings and I'm doing an opaque wing. Now, if you go over to Prismatic Attic, my friend Celeste, she did a wonderful tutorial this week on how to do translucent wings. She is the queen of wings and we did the same picture as a collaboration with each other. And I will leave her link in the description box below.
If you like what you saw and you want to see more, like and subscribe. Then you could see me. Yes, I'm doing my favorite thing. I'm watching YouTube. Ha, 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 ha.